Hey, what's going on guys? Uh, I wanted to do a quick video on um, kind of how I approach level design layouts as far as like visually presenting them. Uh, let's see if I can do this in a decent presentation. You know me, I like to do things in one take and just if there's issues, then you know I'm human. So I've got this uh, location. I think this is in uh, is in Denmark and Copenhagen somewhere. So I just focused in on this little area here. Let's just screenshot this. We'll grab it and we'll bring it into Photoshop. Make a new document and paste it in here. So um, let's just focus on this courtyard, right? So let's just, uh, ah, we're okay with the layout here. So the background, we're gonna make the background black and then I just make this an image to lower that opacity. Uh, and then this is the part that I mainly wanted to demo. So making a new layer, let's just call this um, solid. So this is gonna be where like players aren't expected to be able to access. So like you can't get into this building or this is like a hard wall and a, this is also a hard wall. And then you have these secondary elements that are here. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll start with painting this. Uh, let's say we've got black here. So now that we've got, these are just pixels, right? Just pixel color, paint it on with a, just a solid brush. Uh, we're gonna go into the layer, double click on it. And then we'll go over here and we'll go to powder, pattern overlay. So one of the patterns is this one here. There's also these like uh, dashes that are separated instead of a solid. So you can play around with like a couple different patterns. Uh, but usually I stick with this one, this one, and this one's usually my primary one. So let's hit OK on that. And you can see that it's already filled in the space uh, with that kind of pattern. So going back, double click on the layer, let's go ahead and expand on this just a little bit further. And now this will allow for you to be able to iterate and move quickly with, with how you're building stuff and how you're trying to design your layout. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll add a stroke which adds like an outside here. I'll make it a different, I'll make an extreme color so you can see it. So there's a stroke. Uh, if we go on the inside, I usually tend to do an inside stroke. Uh, depending on the size of the image, if the image is really high resolution, you're gonna have to make the stroke quite wide in order to see it. Uh, I think for this image, a stroke of three pixels is, is pretty good. I'm gonna make that black now. And then the only other thing that I usually do is uh, color overlay. And if you set that overlay to a multiply, you can then uh, give it some color information. So let's say we let's say we go with this color, right? And hit OK. Now the nice thing is this is all happening to the pixels that are inside of that layer. So if we minimize the effects, this will collapse these here. And you can also uh, turn them on and off in order to display other things if you need to. But we'll collapse that down. Now this is this is the nice part about this. Uh, Remember that these are just effects that are on top. So it's just black pixels and then whatever is happening with the effects is affecting those. So we'll turn that off. We'll just erase this. And you can see now with the effect on whenever we paint, it's always, it always just works. Now with that said, I usually uh, use a lot of uh, the polygonal masking tool. And it's pretty cool because you can like you can zoom in. If you hit backspace, you can remove points in the order that you added them. So if we could just click a bunch of points out and then you hit backspace, you're just removing those points. So let's go ahead and imagine the space. Maybe this cuts back a little bit and goes in here and then cuts back out this way. It's orthographic, but there's still some perspective stuff going on. Uh, let's bring it out here, up here, over here and it looks like there's maybe some hedges that are kind of cutting the space. So we'll just do that and see, now you've got this shape, right? You fill that in, look at that. Got a really nice uh, clean layout. And then later, if you want to, you can just go in and uh, select the color overlay and switch the color to whatever you, whatever you like. Now the nice thing is you can just alt click uh, and drag the layer up. Maybe call this like solid two or a second, secondary. Put that maybe under this layer. We'll collapse these. 
So secondary, let's just, uh, so if we paint it, you can see it's under the solid. Uh, with that said, you can then go into the secondary and um, switch out the color of this. Maybe maybe secondary colors or secondary elements are going to be more of this like teal. Let's go hit go ahead and hit OK on that. Erase that out, and then let's uh, marquee and fill that in. Look how look how clean that is. Oh, it feels good. So remember, uh, these are only black pixels with this effect on. So if you highlight an area and then press Control T. You're now in transform and you can uh, hold down control or alt um, and move these these points around. And because the way the pixels are set up, uh, it will never, um, uh, the way the filters are set up, it will never change the, the size of the pixel border. So that's pretty cool. Now the other really nice thing is if you highlight and hold down control, uh, with the cut, you can pull these away from each other. And you can see when it splits, it again updates the filters accordingly. So if you need to, you can just cut this and move this around. Press Control T. Look at this. How cool is that? So what this is, is if you press Control T and hold down Control, you can grab these points and freeform uh, deform them if you need to. And then if you need to, like, say, cut in, you can just highlight and delete. Or you can even use the erase tool, hold down shift um, and erase those. The reason I like to use the um, polygon tool or the, the polygonal marquee tool is you get much cleaner cuts. You can see like that. So I'm just going to like block out some, some pieces and kind of um, move things around. Now, when I copy and paste, You'll see that I'm, I'm getting the black information. Uh, so if I control E to merge that layer down, I will get this embedded into the original black layer uh, below it. And then with that, it will inherit the effects. Now, some of the things you can do to speed up this process is like, let's say, uh, we're going to rotate this. We'll move this here. If you hold down control and alt, You'll see your mouse turns into a black arrow with a white arrow under it. It's basically going to duplicate inside of the same layer your selection. So you can do some really nice like duplicate meshes, if you want to call it that, right? Um, yeah, now with that said, I'll just kind of go through and build some of this stuff out real quick. Um, thinking about some of the elements, things that, that may be blocking the space but are, are Temporary, so maybe secondary elements uh, are teal, which means maybe they're destructible. If you find out later that uh, it's not the case that they're needing to be destructible, you can cut them and then paste them um, into the layer above and then merge it down and then inherit that. Uh, if you do, press can highlight them, Control T. Sorry, I need to be in the right layer. Control T and then um, move them. You'll see they're now highlighted. You could double click so that they're highlighted, then go to this layer and then paint. And then uh, just make sure they're deleted in the other layer. Like if I turn this layer off, you can see there's still some information from other things. But in the reality, I, in reality, I just kind of like, I just kind of go. Like whenever I, whenever I need to show something in one layer, I just highlight that layer and, and then paint in it. So like this, maybe this needs to be solid. These are solid. Um, there's a tree here, it looked like. So maybe we do like a, um, a circle. Holding down shift keeps it, keeps it a circle. If it's not uh, big enough, you can just make a bigger circle and maybe paint that in. So now you've got a solid tree. Um, if you need to, you can dupe that around. There's a tree there. There's a tree there. There's a tree there. Um, some of the lighter elements, which probably aren't full on player blockers, like maybe they can either jump over this or run through it. You just mask them out in, uh, in the, uh, secondary elements. But yeah, hopefully, Hopefully this is helpful.
to someone out there when you're planning out uh, layouts and whatnot. You can see polygon tool. It's lovely. And fill that in. You can see now we have this space, right? And maybe this is like from a player flow standpoint, we can make another layer. Think about like how a player uh, passes through these spaces. So maybe a player goes this way. Can I just turn smoothing on? What's happening here? I don't think I can on this uh, brush. But uh, so say you go this way and a player is going back here. It kind of sucks that they have nowhere to go and it's kind of a dead end here. So it's usually a good case scenario that wherever players go, there's always a forward direction to go elsewhere. So in that case, maybe we need to be uh, finding a way to open this up. Maybe there's a gap in the wall here. So you can see how, how nice it is to just, maybe there's a gap right there and you open that up. Yeah, all right. Hopefully this was helpful and it gives you some ideas and ways to think about the layout of your, uh, your maps as you're working on them. If you're trying to plan from like a top down view or uh, just want to like kind of visualize your space a little bit better. Um, yeah, cool. All right, guys, I will see you later. Peace.